Is that a Supra? I thought the song was over. I was wrong. What's up, what What's up, friends? My name is Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Welcome to Friday Fart Bags on Friday. Uh, Friday, we're going to randomly fix some stuff, hang out, and... Uh... Hi. Uh, we are going to get the Razorback put back together so that I can start railing 40 degrees of uptilt with big-ass motors and super pitchy props again. Um, I've got the uh, correct length um, Axie 2, and we're going to swap in a... Um, what's this called again? A camera. Uh, the Pro. The uh, Nebula Pro. That's what it's called. Uh, the White Nebula Pro... The white Axie 2 antenna to go with the white motors, the white Lumineer um, race wire LEDs, and blue in the rear for the engines on the back of it. The There's a show called The Expanse on Amazon Prime that if you're not familiar with, turn this bullshit off and go watch that. Um, it's uh, one of the better sci-fi shows ever in the world. And... Um, one of the ships on there is white and red, and it's a very fast ship. So the uh, name of that ship is the Razorback. So I've nicknamed this one the Razorback, and I've put as much white stuff on it as I possibly can. Um, it's white and red, so then we've got the uh, the red GoPro mount, red standoffs, and uh, the ships in the Expanse, all the, the, the engines all burn blue. Uh, so I've got some blue LEDs and then blue TPU on the back of here to, you know... Be as nerdy as possible. <laughs> FPV Flyer was first in the chat. Frank Nicholas was next. CMYK FPV Northern Tier. Matt Trombley. Tongue Out FPV. Brad Mond and Hockey Rounds. Douglas Otwell. FPV Super Trucker. Sky Sailor. Cole Powers. Gritty Curtis. CB FPV. Rock Crawler. P. Richard Scott is in the house. June Loco. What's up, friends? Uh, thanks for coming. Fank of the Week. Anybody know what Fank of the Week is? You should. You should. I've been telling you to go subscribe to Mighty Car Mods for probably about the last year, every time I play the mailbag thing. Hey, speaking of, ah! I'm not really ready to do mailbag, I just wanted to hit the button. Just kidding, I'm ready to do it. Uh, my dad sent me some fun stuff. Some uh, Kester leaded solder. Let's see what it is. It is... Where's the ratio? Uh, give me the ratio. There it is. It's uh, it's 6337. Cool. I have not used uh, 6337 solder before. Um, it's uh, it the the solder cools more slowly than 6040. Um, I have never had a problem with 6040. And I've always kind of thought that I, I, I've always kind of liked how quickly it cools down. Um, but this will be good. I'm, I'm excited to actually use 6337 um, to see how it is. I'll, I'll be interested to see if I can tell like an immediate difference or not. Boy, oh boy, this is enough solder to last till the dawn of time. Oh, this is also uh, a nice thin solder. This will be cool. Uh, in addition to this uh, being the different ratio, uh, this is just a really thin wire, so I'll be able to add less solder. This will be nice for, like, the really small joints. Very cool. Uh, I'm looking for the end, and I'm not finding it. Where's the end? Whatever. Uh, and Kester uh, makes really good solder. Very cool. Uh, I'm, I'm actually really excited to see if I can tell a difference. Uh... And then we've got some some solder sponges. Oh boy, this is gonna start contra con controversy. Uh, so my dad is an OG electrical technician. I he he told he finally told me. I don't know how long I've been doing. At some point. Um, Someone referred to my dad as an electrical engineer, and I, I just that that was just it. That was that was what 
I don't know. Like, I knew what he did at uh, uh, PBPL and uh, the College of New Jersey, but I just never really put two and two together that he wasn't really doing electrical engineering. He was doing electrical technician work. Um, electrical engineers and electrical technicians uh, are different. And um, my father is in the OG camp of using the solder sponges, but the controversy is going to start because you people in chat um, have told me a bunch of times that, that wet sponges are really hard on the tips of the soldering irons. I suspect my father's uh, rebuttal to that would be, then just change the damn tip on the soldering iron more often, you jank bastard um but yeah i don't know this is a box of of the little sponges um you beautiful people in the chat have told me to use the um it's it's taped down to the desk uh but it's um the uh the copper you know the uh it's like a brillo pad the like copper brillo pad uh, and that's what I've always used, which works totally fine. But if somebody can come up with a with a, a compelling 2023 argument to use the uh, the sponges, I can use the sponges again. I have the little pad on my uh, soldering station. Um, and then this is solder wick. I I thought solder wick usually came on those little round spools. I have a feeling that it's not in little round spools in here. Let's take a look. Early mailbag, yo. Oh, it is on um, little round spools. Very cool. There's just a whole effing bunch of them with different colors. I'm assuming that the different colors are different thicknesses. Let's take a look. It's just a, it's a whole box of wick. Woo! I mean, if nothing else, it's cool looking. All right, so let's see. Are the colors different widths? So this purple one is a big fat width. Uh, this purple one is 3.5 millimeters wide. Yep, they are different widths. This yellow one says that it's 1.5 millimeters wide. Let's take, oh yeah, there we go. There we go. So different thicknesses. Um, that's actually kind of handy. The, the one that, uh, the spool of wick that I probably stole from my father um, is somewhere in the middle. This is like uh, Chemtronics calls it size number 480-4-5. Well, I can tell you how wide it is right now, actually. Uh, this is like a middle ground. Yeah, so it, it looks like it's about two millimeters wide. Um, this has always been great for me. This two millimeter wide has always been like not too wide, but not too skinny. Uh, and that's the dream. Am I right, fellas? Just ask your significant other. Um, so cool. We've got mad solder wick. These little things are great because they actually snap into one another. And so we are going to make the ultimate, ultimate solder wick stack right now. We're doing it right now. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Oh no, I should I should uh organize them though, right? So two two millimeters. Alright, so the two two millimeters. And then we've got this is 2.5 millimeters. So put this here. And then we got three. Okay. Ooh. I should just be putting one. No, 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 I shouldn't do it doubled. I should do it, do them singled up. Okay. So. Two mil. All right, so we got two, 2.5, three. Where's 3.5 at? There's 3.5. That's uh, Captain Purple in the house. All right, Captain Purple's in the house. And then this is 1.5. So look at that. We've got from 1.5 to 3.5 in one big fat satisfying stack. Awesome, 1.5, we'll make a second stack. Uh, three, and then 3.5. Uh, this solder, solder wick usually has a little bit of flux on the inside of it, but 
if you're having trouble with solder wick, add a little bit of flux and it will um, make it work a lot better, a lot quicker. Um, very cool. Look at that. I got a whole bunch of solder wick now. Once I run through that uh, Chemtronics, I can jump into this. I might, um, this is probably enough solder wick for the rest of my life. So I might put this into uh, giveaways for, cause I know a whole bunch of you guys are not using solder wick. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna start putting one of these into to each giveaway so that as many of you people get solder wick onto your bench as possible. Um, reduce the amount of solder on your joints. Thank you, dad. Very cool, much appreciated. Um, sound off in the chat about the sponges, yo. Let's hear your, your sponge feedback. People are, uh, the, the, the natives are getting restless when it comes to sponges. The natives previously got restless when it came to sponges. Uh, Danzel the Terrible says, eat a box of Wix. Um, hey, that was flying the Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop at um, RC Drifting last night. The Cinematic Tiny Whoop uh was a, a hot mess let me show you this let me show you this real quick um the uh, the battery lead broke off so I, I do need to fix that at some point but i noticed something last night when um uh so it has a the the cinematic tiny whoop the cinematic analog tiny whoop right the one that's in the fractal frame with the purple ducts um it has a foxier, I knew I was going to forget the name of it, Razor? I want to say it's the foxier Razor. Pretty sure it is. Ah! Is it the Pico Razor? Maybe it doesn't. Or does it? What the hell camera is this? Uh, is this the Tiny Whoop Pinch Cam? I don't think it is. What? I swore that this had a... What the hell camera is this that's on here? Uh, so the flight footage you saw was from this guy in the Newbie Drone Cockroach frame with the Runcam Nano 3 camera on it. Um, and last night I realized how much better the uh the run cam nano 3 handles low light here check this out so whatever the hell the camera that's in it all right so there it is just sitting i'm trying to get a shot where they're both looking at the same thing Okay, so the, these two are roughly looking at the same thing. Look at the difference between these two cameras. Um, I noticed this with the, the analog the analog edit that I put up, analog drifting edit. This is the camera that's on the cinematic tiny whoop right now. Look how dark it is, man. What the hell? Why is it so dark? Look, look at this disgustingness. And then this is the Runcam Nano 3. Look how much better this is. Let's get it up in the air here. There it is up in the air. And then I did get this up in the air for a split second. Well, now it's gonna be thrown off because it's looking at the window, but now it's looking back. Look how bad this looks, yo! So yeah, the the camera on this little fractal build has gotta go. Um, it's a, uh, maybe one of you will recognize it. So it's got, a full-size lens on it. It doesn't have like a tiny little lens or anything like that, right? And hold on, let's hold it up here. And it doesn't really seem to have any markings on the back of it. Please. 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 There it goes. Um Yeah, it's uh I thought it was the the Foxier Razor, but now I don't know. 
Uh, the leads are up on the top. Let's figure out what camera this is, yo. Let's figure this camera out. Um, see, there's a little box on the right there. Okay. Let's take a minute to figure out what this camera is. There, there aren't that many little tiny cameras. We can, uh, we should be able to, we should be able to fix this, figure this out. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm not, this is not going to be a, uh, a camera that stays on this tiny whoop. This is, it, it looks awful. Uh, so let's really quick search for the Foxier Razor. All right. So it's obviously not this. It's obviously not the Razer Nano. Uh, my other suspicion is that it's the tiny pinch cam, but I, I kind of don't, I don't think it is. I don't think it is, but we, we should be able to figure that out pretty quick here. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, the wires are up on top. Um, damn, there, there's no image of the back of it. Well, I can kind of see there is a little component here, though. And this guy does have that same component in that same spot. Maybe this is the pinch cam. I wouldn't think that the pinch cam would have such a hard time in low light, though. But, I mean, maybe. Hold on. Let me take a close look at this. Oh, I'm starting to think maybe it's the pinch cam. The, um... The wires are soldered to the top in the exact same spot. Are they in the same order? Red, black, yellow? Red, black, yellow? They are in the same order. Um, it does have this component right here on the side in the exact same spot. I guess maybe I could scrape away. It, and it, it does look like it's got the same lens housing and everything. Yep, there's a big glob there. I mean, regardless, it it, it I, I'm I'm changing it out. Like I'm I'm gonna change the uh, slim pinch. I'm gonna change it out. This is it's definitely not this. This is a different lens. Um, but I did kind of want to figure out, and it, and it's not the ultra wide FOV pinch. I know that for a fact. Uh, so the question becomes like, what camera do I put on this? I could put a run cam nano three on it there's that pico razor hell maybe i'll put a pico razor on it uh... hmm what other cameras are there hold on let me let me get my little uh bag o cameras out and we'll see what what i've got here I don't know if we're going to do this tonight but it, it's just something that uh, that i noticed last night and i figured you know Good time to kind of talk about it because it is i mean maybe we'll do it tonight i don't know oh here's the uh okay so here's a camera which camera is this i have a camera here in a uh in a mcstinky which camera is this oh this is a newbie driven bi okay so i could do that i could go to a newbie driven bi camera that would give me a nice wide field of view um I don't think that I want a super wide field of view. I want it to be zoomed in a little bit. It's really hard to stay close to the little RC drift cars. So a really wide field of view would mean I would need to get even closer and it would just kind of make things even more difficult. So I, I don't necessarily think that I want that. Um, this is my bag O cameras and canopies here. And I need to get this organized this is a hot mess so what do we got we got this what's this one this is i think this is that i don't know what this is is this a newbie drone bi this is a newbie drone bi so i've got another one of these and it looks like ah look at me i put a um i put a regular camera plug on this newbie drone bi camera here uh, so that in theory, 
I could put it into the um, into a McStinky mount, which is actually what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put this into a McStinky mount, and I'm going to leave it here on the table next to the other McStinky mount with a newbie drone BI camera that has the other plug. Actually, this is kind of worthless here. This is a BI with uh, in a McStinky with the newbie drone plug. This McStinky mount does not work properly with any of the newbie drone boards because of where they have their UFLs. It makes this McStinky mount sit sideways. So this is silly to have this camera in here. There's really no reason for this. So Jesus, I'm going to pop this out and then this is going to be an extra newbie drone BI camera. That's annoying because I think I just bought an extra newbie drone BI camera, um, but that's okay. I now have an extra um, and that's fine. This, uh, this is kind of handy, having this uh, newbie drone BI here with the Mobula cable, uh, because I can plop this on to any number of, of different builds that I've got um, with the Mobula boards to get that nice wide field of view. So cool. Uh, this guy can live here. Uh, this extra newbie drone uh, BI will go in the little bag here. All right, so what is this? This is a Caddx Ant. I could do this. Oh, I will probably do this. I will probably do this Caddx Ant because it'll let me um, change settings on it. Pretty sure I'm going to do this Caddx Ant. Okay, I'm going to put this guy aside because that's probably what's going to end up on there. Uh, what else do I have? This is another Caddx Ant, but it's the one with the uh, the screw mounting holes left and right. No real reason for that. And then that's all I got. Uh, I don't have any other... Wait, no, here, what's this one? Oh, this is the OV... Um, this is the uh, the OV-231. Very rare old school camera. Uh, this is more of an outdoor camera, though. This would not like the low light. Um, so, okay, cool. That was easier than I thought. I, I I don't have as many cameras as I thought I had. Uh, where is that? Where is that fox ear Pico razor? I bet you it's on one of these. I bet you it's on this rig actually. Yep, there it is. There's the there's the fox ear razor. It's on the uh, the jungle gym basher. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, so we will try out. Uh, I'll try the Caddx Ant on this thing. And then I figure I, I also might as well try a, uh, a run cam nano at some point. I don't, I don't think that I have an extra at the moment, but I should have an extra. So I'll probably just order up an extra run cam nano three. Um, I just love that camera. It's just a, it's, it's just such a solid performing camera, very lightweight. Um, it fits in the, in the amazing canopies. So yeah, I'll do that. Uh, but yeah, for the time being, I'll throw this, um, I'll throw this Caddx Ant in there and then we can debunk the myth that the, uh, Caddx Ant is the, the best camera in the world. I don't know. It seemed okay. It was, it, it, it wasn't, it didn't blow me away hooked up to the newbie drone board. Um, that's why it's in a goober canopy. I tried to put this Caddx Ant onto the tiny lifters thinking that I would be able to adjust the settings enough to get rid of that like muddiness um, of their uh, proprietary OSD chip. But what I've learned with the newbie drone uh, the newbie drone AIOs is that they just they don't seem to look good unless you use the newbie drone BI camera like they very obviously developed the BI camera on their own boards um, and it's it's just really the only camera that looks good on those so yeah I mean that's fine like it's, it's, don't it, it sounds like I'm saying that is a bad thing, but it's not. The The newbie drone BI camera, I actually really like. It's one of my favorites. The The field of view is awesome. Uh, the colors are really nice, and it's super lightweight. So I don't have a problem with that camera at all. Um, now I've got an extra canopy. Oh, I should have put the... Um, 
I should have put that other camera in here, but that's okay. Oh man, here we go again with the goober canopies fighting me. Don't fight me. Just just thread into your little home. Hey, there it goes. All I gotta do is bitch and moan, and it'll it'll immediately help you out. Uh, okay, so let me take the the rest of these little canopies. I, I have like three of these clear canopies um, in these bags, and it doesn't fit right in the other bag. Uh, in the chat. What's happening, friends? Type at CIDFPV if you want me to read your chat comment. CMYK says, yo, yo, what's up, gangly gang? It's CIDFPV. Uh, CBFPV says, love the rip. Thank you, dude. Uh, Rock Crawler says, hey, CIDFPV and gangly gang. Brandon Woodford says, that is great solder. It is indeed. CMYK says, uh, I've been using the same TS100 tip with a sponge for three years and no issues. Same tip and sponge. Um, so there's one vote for the sponge. Patrick says, on this episode, see how he gets proper solder. You guys remember, I, I, I got yelled at by the Europeans and I stopped doing it, but I used to say solder um, as like kind of a joke. But yeah, the Europeans did not appreciate that. And after being yelled at a couple times in comments, I stopped doing it. Uh, but you OGs will remember when I used to say solder all the damn time. Uh... Soldier. Uh, Brad Monden says, doesn't spin at arm. Also still hovering around 43%. Reset to stock tune and no hairs. Uh, oh, man upgraded motors to 32,500 from Weebleed, uh, but they seem to have a lot of resistance slash drag trying to spin so much... Uh, so much so my boost on Blue J.16 is maxed at 11.25 and one motor still doesn't spin at arm. Um, it's starting to sound like your AIO is just having issues. It, it sounds like that one, there might be a fat blown up on that one, uh, on that one motor. Uh, I don't think you've replaced the AIO yet, right? Unfortunately, with AIOs, like, you can't really troubleshoot them all that much. You just kind of replace them. Um, it's it's one of the more annoying things about AIOs. But, um, yeah, I mean, you've now replaced the motors. I think it's time to replace the AIO. Even if the problem is not the AIO, it's nice to have an extra one. So it's not, you know, don't feel like you're you're wasting money here. And or, you know, so you'll you'll have an extra one for a backup or... You can build the second rig if the AIO is not the problem, but the AIO kind of has to be the problem at this point. Like you've replaced the motors and that's really all there is. There's just motors and AIO. Um, I mean, I guess maybe you could be having an issue where um, you've got motor screws that are too long or something like that, but I really, really, really doubt that. Um, so yeah, I think at this point you just need to replace that AIO. Um, the, the AIOs fail a lot. Um, it's, it's super annoying, but it, it kind of is what it is. There's, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I think that's your next troubleshooting step. I, I absolutely hate to just keep throwing money at it, but sometimes it's the only way, right? Like the, the, um, it's incredibly difficult to repair any of these components. Like, good luck figuring out what failed and then trying to find replacement parts. So, yeah, super tough. Uh, and to be honest, with, with how inexpensive this gear is, a lot of times it doesn't really make sense to repair it anyway. You'll spend more money on the, the repair supplies, and you'll certainly spend more time um, than the thing is actually worth. So... Um, yeah, this is sort of a part of the game. Unfortunately, like there, there are times where you just have to replace stuff. You, you this, you know, you got to just replace the flight controller, replace the the ESC, and see if things get better. What is with the? Did this lens break off of here? What what is this weirdly colored smack on here? I don't know. It's probably fine. Um, so this is the bi with the 
other plug on it. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so we're good. The the cinematic analog tiny whoop is sorted. Um, I will continue to try to figure out what that camera is. So super low light, um, but it might not be. I actually, you know what? I don't think it is the tiny whoop pinch cam. I think that I sold a rig at some point that had the tiny whoop pinch cam on it. Um, but it does look similar to it so yeah i don't know i don't know that's a tough one too much stuff forget what it all is uh what's going on in chat hockey round says uh i use a barely wet sponge yeah you're not supposed to have the sponges for the soldering be soaking wet you 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 saturate them and then you you wring them out and then yeah right ranham says do you know where i can get a screw with m2 at the base and M1.6 at the tip to mount a Vista on a whoop stack. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, I know what you're saying now. Uh, iFlight includes them in their frame kits, but I can't find out where to buy. So, um, if the threading on the, the screw is M1.6, then that's just what you need to look for. You just need to look for an M1.6 screw. Um, don't overcomplicate it and like look for an m2 screw with m1.6 just look for an m1.6 screw um you'll probably find them in phillips head and if you have to do that you can um but if you find an m1.6 screw that is uh that has a metric head on it i'm willing to bet that that head will be m2 it might not be it, it might be an m1.6 head but um yeah uh m 1.6 so uh ebay uh ebay is gonna have m 1.6 screws for sure let's see if uh so quad mula has a really nice assortment of hardware amazingly i i had no idea um and Actually, they, they've got these countersunk M2s that I've been struggling to find uh, for my AOS 3.5, so I'm going to be snagging some of these. I don't think that they have any M1.6, though, but let me take a quick look because I'm on their hardware page. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking for some hard-to-find uh, hardware, Quadmula has a whole bunch. Uh, so, yeah, you can check them out. So, M1.2 button head, M1.2... Uh, Look, they've got M2.5. I've never even seen these before. M2.5 button head countersunk. Pretty cool. Uh, we've got a bunch of M3 stuff. So M2. Let's see what's over here. M3 to nylon knot. Or M3 nylon knot, rather. Uh, they've got these cool spacers. Uh, and then there's the extra parts for their frames. And here's where I went. Okay, yeah, no, it's just M2. Uh, so they don't they don't go smaller than M2, uh, but eBay does. Uh, so yeah, I would uh, I would jump onto eBay, and you'll pretty easily be able to find M1.6 screws, and then just yeah, there's gonna be a whole bunch of them. Uh, start looking, figure out what length you want. Hey, here we go. There's uh. Allen headed kind of annoying that they're silver. I always look for black, but, uh, there you go. M 1.6 by three all the way up to 16. Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah. And I'll bet you don't quote me on this, but I'll bet you these are M two, uh, threading. They might not be. So tell me here somewhere. Mm, thread pitch doesn't seem to really tell. Well, oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, what are you looking for? M one point six, right? M one point six. Oh no, it's not gonna. Oh, hold on. Oh, there's M one point six. Uh, yeah, okay. It doesn't. It doesn't tell you what what driver you need. Um. 
But you could try these. Well, I might be able to figure it out. Hold on. Uh, why is this a... Why is this 2.862 3.14? fuck is that about what let me get to an m2 screw all right here's m2 why does that change no it doesn't change uh so look this is an m2 and it's the 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 size of the head here is 3.62 to 3.98 so let's compare that 3.62 to 3.98 Ah, okay. No, this might not be M2 headed. You might need an, uh, yeah, a different driver. Um, but yeah, eBay has a lot of different screws. I would, um, I would spend some time pouring through a bunch of these. Like I said, you'll definitely find Phillips heads, but man, is that torture? Uh, I don't really, you know, there's like fast and all there's, there's some other spaces, uh, places rather. I've not had any luck with those. Um, I've had the best luck with eBay and Amazon actually. Here's some black ones. So yeah, look around. Uh, maybe you can find what you need. Does this have M1.6? Here's some black M M1.6s from uh, by three all the way up to by 16. Uh, I just, I don't know what the, uh... ah, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. This tells us. So it's the S measurement. It's the S measurement, which is not down. Oh, yeah, here it is, here it is, S measurement. Um, so, M1.6, S. Hey, look at this. Look, 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 look. The S measurement. So, M1.6 is the first line. Look at the S measurement. And then M2 is the second line. Look at the S measurements. They're the same. So these black ones might be what you need. These black ones might have that. It, it certainly looks like they've got the same. Um, yeah, I think that's what you need. And they're black. 10,000 points. Um, here's the name. If you search this on eBay, it should find it. Let's try it. Oh boy, no it doesn't. Oh, there it is, there it is. It looks like it's the fourth item down. So yeah, maybe that's what you need. Just check, you, you gotta lock in your lengths and whatnot, that's what she said. Uh, cool, there you guys go. Uh, bo -bo 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 -bo. Safe, you probably need the shortest length for the for the Vista, but uh, check it. Safe Zone says, uh, what's good CIFPV and my FPV peeps? CBFPV says, I have a Mobula 6 that is having some trouble. All mothers are properly ordered and in the right direction. But when I arm it, it starts flipping and spinning out of control. Any advice? Um, so you are going to check the board orientation first. Um, plug it into Betaflight and connect it. The very first screen that comes up will have like a virtual picture of the quad. Hold the quad and go nose down and make sure that the virtual picture goes nose down. Yaw it to the left, make sure it yaws to the left. Roll it left and right, make sure it right. So make sure that the virtual quad on the screen um, is reacting the same way. If it's not, you need to go into the settings. Is it set? It config. You need to go into the config tab and change the board orientation. There are YouTube videos on how to do it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then you also want to make sure that you're both props, like in the motors tab, you have it set up for props in if you're spinning them props in or props out if you're spinning them props out. Um, and then you also can check that the right motor is in the right corner. There's a setup wizard for motor location. So you're just going to run that. Um, and that'll make sure that motor one is back here, motor two is up here, motor three, motor four. Um, that's really all that it can be. If 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 it's not any of those things, then the gyro has failed. Um, but usually it doesn't fail like that. So there, there, you'll probably find it in, in one of those steps. Cole Power says, apparently from now on, we must be concerned with the question of whether a solder joint is sponge worthy. Yikes. <laughs> CMYK says Foxy or Pico Razor. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay, I, I thought that was the one they were looking at. Yeah, the Razor Nano. No, 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 it's not that one. Um, oh, wait, no. the Hold on, Pico Razor. Uh, no, it's not the Pico Razor either. The the uh, it doesn't have this box up in the up in the front. Uh, let me just make sure. Hold on. Yeah, no, it's definitely not the Pico Razor. Here we go. This is what I wanted. Come on. Yeah, it it doesn't have this big front area here and also the the wires are not soldered on the on the corner here okay so it's not that one all right that's probably an old chat comment uh cmyk says uh looked at a review of that build from a year ago it looks like the foxier pico razor in the in the og fractal 75 kit interesting um, that's a good idea, dude. Hold on. If I go to my own effing channel and then click the little magnifying glass here and search for fractal, that'll find all of the videos with the fractal build. So let's just open a couple of these up eight months ago, eight months ago. Um, Cinematic analog seven months ago. This is probably this is probably the right stream. So let's take a quick look here. Blah 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 blah. All right, so you're gonna see me direct solder the camera up at some point. It looks like I've already done it. Yeah, there it is. Get in there, man. That looks good. Is that the camera? That's not. That is a, a newbie drone BI. I can tell by the wires. Uh, so this is when I built it with the BI. At some point, I must have swapped the camera out. Where is that little build? It still has the T-Motor AIO in it, so that's good. Let's okay. Here's me mounting the camera. Maybe maybe I'll mention what the camera is. All right, come on, past me. Mention what the camera is. I'm. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, that's the, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that that is definitely the BI camera. Uh, so this is no help. Uh, at some point, I fixed. Grunty, bro. Grunty AF. Uh, all right, so this is a video where I just fly them, I guess. Uh, what are we doing here? Are we building? Titan says, have you tried using the fractal without the ducks? Does it fly well, or shouldn't it fly better? Hey. Okay, so we're using, the, that's the T-Motor board. Look at me using Soderwick in this video. Okay. Where do I? Okay, so yeah, and now this, again, this is the newbie drone BI camera. I can tell because the video wire is white. So this ain't it. There's a there's a more recent live stream where I switched the camera. Uh, finishing the Fractal 65. This is from five months ago. Maybe this is it. Cinematic analog, seven months ago. Nope, 11 months ago. Nope, 11 uh two months ago could be it five days ago that was definitely not it i would have remembered um all right 
let's take a look. We just opened two more up. Where are we at here? Fuck! That's not me switching the camera out. That's just finishing the build. Uh, I, I guess, unless, m maybe, maybe I, uh, maybe I switch the camera out on this stream. You never know. Well, it'll be easy to see because it'll change to a yellow uh, video wire. Ain't gonna be it. Uh, yeah. All right, that ain't it. What about this one? This is two months ago. This is it's probably in here. It'll be in here. Come on. No, it's not in here. Uh, fractal seventy five. How do you mount your cam? All right, that's why it found this one because of the word fractal in it. Sorry, we're burping. We have a Q and A. Uh, crap. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. That was a that was, that was a good try though. It's a good try. It's in there somewhere, man. There there is a live stream with where, where I swapped this camera on. I doubt that I did it um, outside of a live stream. Tiny whoop stuff I almost always do on live streams because they're easy and they typically don't explode. CMYK, uh, dropping a link to rect.com. Hey, there we go. There's some uh, metric, but they're probably, uh, they're probably, they look to be Phillips headed. Maybe not though. Never know. That link is in the chat for anybody that wants it. Uh, Travis H says evening. Ram Ham says thanks. Uh, is putting the Vista right on the stock a good way to do it? I figured it's less complicated than printing a stack adapter. Um, I think you're saying putting it on top of the stack, you should be fine. Just make sure there's at least a little bit of an air gap between the Vista and whatever's below it, and you'll be fine. CBFPV says... Uh, I tried all that and it still starts spinning. I don't want to give up yet uh, as it's quite new. Any other things it could be? Um, not really, but uh, CB, like you need to just think back to when this problem started. Whatever you did right before this problem started, that that's what's causing it. Um, I doubt that it did this right out of the box. If it did this right out of the box, return it. Um, there's something wrong with it. Uh, but yeah, those are really all the things that, that, um, that it could be. It's either board orientation or do this, go into the motors tab and spin each motor up individually and make sure that they're spinning in the correct direction. Um, and then check props in props out. And then what you want to do is check everything all over again. I know that seems insane, but I can't tell you how many times I've worked with people and we spend a half an hour, 45 minutes going through everything. And they're like, nope, I checked that. Nope, I checked that. Nope, I checked that. And then I just force them to double check everything. And there, and a couple minutes later they go, oh. oh, it was that thing that you told me about an hour ago. And I'm like, yeah, you got to double check stuff. And that's happened to me too. Um, so yeah, double check everything and hopefully we can find it. Cool. Uh, uh, is uh, Brandon in the chat? Brandon's baked beans. You in the chat? You hanging out? Yeah, you are. Uh, Brandon has been helping me with the Cinesplore tune. And uh, we are quickly realizing, and I talked to Bob about this too, actually, um, that there is just... So the, the Cinesplore frame was designed... Man, this thing is filthy i was using this to blow leaves off the roof and it just got disgusting it's all dusty and just awful uh i need to wipe this thing down it's gross um so yeah brandon and i are kind of realizing and i talked to bob about this that 
the the Cinesplore, it's an older frame. I still do think that it is the best of the Cinewoop frames. I've just not seen another Cinewoop frame that's as good as this one. Um, but it's not without its faults. The the Cinewoop, the Cinesplore frame was designed to be absolutely as lightweight as possible. And it's amazing with that. And there are motors and um, uh, there are combinations of motors and ducts that do work on this. This duct is loose. Why is this duct loose? I swear to God, I checked these ducts to make sure that they weren't loose because when you start dealing with like weird resonance issues, loose screws are a huge problem. I really hope that this hasn't been the problem all along. I'm pretty sure though that this this is a new, this duct loosening up is new. Um, but yeah, the Cinesplore was designed to be super lightweight and it flies great if you get the right combination of parts. But for some reason there, there are like wrong combinations of parts that you can throw at this thing. Um, and for me, for whatever reason, um, this thing is struggling a little bit. These, the combination of these motors with these propellers with these HQ poor ducts, it's just not happy, which is very weird because the other one, uh, the DJI one on heavier motors, uh, is, is fine. It's not great, but it's, it's significantly better than this. Um, what we're kind of figuring out and Bob echoed this and he said, yes, this, that is the issue, um, is that these arms are just a little bit too thin. These arms are three millimeters thick, which is not very thick. Um, that was done to keep the weight down. This is super lightweight and it flies great being super lightweight. Um, and you can get it tuned, but it leaves a little bit uh, it, 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 it's, yeah, leaves a little bit to be desired. So, uh, Bob is going to give me the 3d print file or he's just going to have him cut himself, but we're going to get some four millimeter arms cut for this thing. Um, and he actually also wants to have six millimeter arms cut for it. Um, just sort of out of curiosity. So we're going to have some fun stuff coming at this Cinesplore. Um, I was wondering, if, so since Brandon and I were doing some tuning back and forth, I asked Brandon, like, hey, do you want to um, do like a screen share and show those logs that I sent you? Um, and he basically said, like, I, that he doesn't really want to trash on the frame, which I get. Uh, but yeah, Brandon, if, if, if you want to, we can do a Discord screen share and you can quickly, um, I don't want to dwell on it, maybe spend like five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, just ripping through those logs. And I mean, if, if there's any like really generic info that, that you've got that can help like a, a ton of people, like we're, we're kind of in the weeds with a pretty specific frame and motor and, and prop and, and duct combo. But yeah, if there's anything that's like really obvious by those logs. So the, the, the initial log that I sent Brandon was a hot mess. Uh, and he had me make a couple of changes and that really helped out, but we're still kind of struggling a little bit. Um, and so, yeah. If you want to do a screen share, that's fine. If not, I at least just wanted to talk about it real quick. Um, okay, he's good. We're, we're, we're not going to do that. It was just totally fine. But Brandon put some, some really good shit in the chat here. Uh, I think the arms need to be thicker. There's just these two persistent peaks at 60 and 80 hertz. Uh, and you can't do anything to fix that without... Uh, looking at the frame or under tuning the PIDs and that's kind of what we're doing at this point is we're we're bringing the PIDs down below 1.0 and well for you it's this way below 1.0 in the sliders and the only time that you can really get away with that and still have a rig that performs good is if it's a rig that's like drastically over um overpowered and this is not that so um yeah that's kind of the situation that we're in it's flying better than it was, and it for like, you know, with 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 Cinewoops, like they don't really have to be completely dialed in, right? You're gonna run the footage through real steady go. Um, I like them to be as dialed in as possible so that you don't have to run the footage through real steady go. Um, but yeah, Cinesplores are. 
kind of is what it is. Uh, but I'm going to get this thing better because I like these motors. I don't want to go back to the Brother Hobby VY motors. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to bug the shit out of Bob to either get me the design file um, or have some four millimeter arms cut. The reason why I think four millimeter is all because Bob wants to go like all the way up to six millimeter. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's on three millimeter right now going from three millimeter to four millimeter in terms of like percentage. That's a big percentage of change, right? You go from one mil to two mil. It's a hundred percent thicker. You go from two mil to three mil. It's 33% thicker. You go from three mil to four mil. It's 25% thicker, right? So like you're only adding an extra millimeter of carbon, but the percentage of change is still massive going from three to four. Four to five, it's less. Five to six, it's less. Six to seven, it's less, right? Um, you, you hit diminishing returns as you go up. But yeah, three to four is a big percentage change. And the Tooth Fairy 2 over here is a breeze to tune. And it's on very similar looking and width arms, but they're four millimeter thick. So I think getting the Cinesplore onto four millimeter arms is all it'll really need. Um, but I'll let you know because, yeah, uh, Bob is down with the idea. I don't know what the logistics are going to be, but him and I will figure it out. And I'll get this thing onto the four mil arms. Um, I am going to have a bunch of those arms cut. So if you guys have Cinesplores and you want them to be a little bit easier to tune, I'll be able to hook you up. And uh, yeah, because I, I think type uh, type Cinesplore into the chat if you have a Cinesplore. I think that I've turned a bunch of you onto this frame. Um, I, I still am totally convinced that it's the best of the Cinewoop frames. Um, most Cinewoop frames kind of suck. Um, and this one does not. So, yeah. Let's get our Cinesplores dialed in a little bit better. Um, I'm also going to talk to um, uh, Eva uh, about her Cinesplore. She, she moved over from the Squirt to the Cinesplore and absolutely loves it, but did have to spend some time uh, on the tune. And so I want to take a look at her tune and see if there's something magical that, that happened there. But yeah. Uh, thank you, Brandon, for helping me out with this. Very, very cool of you. I have one more change to make, um, which is continuing to actually turn the PIDs down, which I don't think is going to do what I want it to do, but it's actually worth a shot. There is a chance that it's just overactive, but I, I doubt it. I, I it just feels like it doesn't have enough PID gain, but I can't push the PID gain up any higher because of the nonsense going on at 60 and 80 hertz. So, yeah. Uh... Ramdago says, I want the Foxier Invincible frame, 2.5 and 3.5, don't you? Um, I do not. The... Uh... Most of these new, well, uh, that's one of these pusher rigs, and the pusher rigs just scare the shit out of me, man. I, I, I just, I'm not down with um, flying around people with these pusher rigs um, because they've got the propellers, like, all the way on the bottom of the duct. So, like, if you get your elevation wrong and and there's somebody's head and, and you... Like, it's just bad, man. Like, I really, I only feel comfortable flying around people with puller rigs where they've got all this stuff down here to protect people. You know, like if somebody puts their fingers up or something like that with a rig like this, there's a good chance that their fingers will hit carbon fiber rather than perfectly getting in here into the propellers. It's certainly a possibility, but if you flip, you know, with a pusher rig, like, if fingers come up, they're going into the props. Like, and it's going to be bad. Um, and I'm not trying to be that guy that, that makes it worse for everyone. Um, we've already had, uh, I, I've, I've, yeah, there, there was already a situation where um, a girl's nose got, like, really fucked up by a pusher rig being flown by an amateur. 
um, at a concert. So, you know, perfect storm of, of bad shit. Uh, and so, yeah, it's something that I take really seriously because I don't want to be that guy. And um, every time it happens, hundreds of people find out. And yeah, that makes less work for us. So let's not do that. Let's let's fly safely so that we don't screw ourselves out of work across the board, right? Steady Eddie says, uh, if those four millimeter arms work out well, uh, would it be possible to get a set? I have two Sin Explorers I love, but would be interested in refreshing mine as well. Yeah, for sure. I'll, 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 um, yeah, I'm not going to hoard them just my, for myself. That's fine. I, I don't know if I'm going to have like one run done just to test them. I don't think so. I think I just want to have them cut an entire sheet of them because they're, they're not going to be worse. So yeah, I, I think I'll have a whole bunch of them made. We'll, we'll see what, um, we'll see what, how many will fit on a sheet. I assume that a lot will fit on a sheet because they are, uh, very skinny arms. So they should be able to just bang, 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 bang. They'll, they'll flip them. They'll do one like this and then flip it and then flip it. Flip, flip. Uh, so yeah, I'll see like what their smallest sheet is. And then see how many can go on there, and away we go. Uh, CMYK has two Cinesplores, as well you should all. McMucus says, the tune on the Hummingbird V3 made me realize how crappy the the tune on my Whoop was. I put the Whoop preset on in Beta Flight that I liked a lot, uh, except the throttle mid was set to 100. Why, why they do? Uh... Uh, that's really weird. Uh, I mean, if the throttle mid is set to a hundred and then the throttle expo is set to zero, it doesn't really matter. Um, I have no idea why they would do that, but yeah. If they have throttle expo turned on and the throttle midpoint is set to a hundred, then that's a great example of why I don't like presets. Cause that's insane. That's a terrible way to have that set up. Um, so yeah, hopefully the throttle expo amount was zeroed out. Uh, uh, chick with a stick impressed by my hair as usual. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ram Dago says you upside down. We'll get two and see where that cam goes. Gert Jan says my new frame from AliExpress came in this week. Apex mini three inch. You have to say looks very good. Um, yeah, the Apex 3, I'm I'm more interested by the Apex 4-inch frame. Um, the arms on the Apex frame are 4 millimeters thick, and a 4 millimeter thick 3-inch arm is just never going to break, and it's going to really put, uh, it's going to, you're going to go through, a, you're going to break a lot of motors if you crash. Um, the Apex 4-inch, with four millimeter arms. Now that makes sense that that that's a frame that um, I've been wanting to buy for a long time. Every time I, I get close to buying it, I, I look it up and I'm just, my brain just melts at how expensive it is. And I, and I just have never bought it uh, and probably never will because I, I, I yeah, four inches, just a, an awkward size. Um, Four inch is an interesting size though for the O3 air unit, but I still think it's too big. I, I think the the O3 McBuka says it was set at zero. Okay, yeah, so you're it's that's fine. It wouldn't do anything. Um, yeah, the the O3 air unit is not really heavy enough to need a four inch frame. Um, it would be better on like three inch or three and a half inch props uh, frame slash frame. So yeah, I, I I I still haven't really found the perfect setup for a forage build, which is fine. Uh, Ram Doggo says Foxy or Cage Frame. I do suffer from short term uh, memory loss. Uh, Foxy or Foxy or Cage Frame. Oh, Foxy or Invincible. Hold on, look. It, it, it's not called the Fox Ear Invincible, though, right? It's called like the Fox Whoop, or whatever the hell it is. Or is it? No, yeah, it's called the Fox Whoop. Um, yeah, the the Fox Whoop is super interesting, but 
Uh, it's a pusher, so I'm, I'm just not into it. It's just not my thing. Not my thing, and that's okay. Uh, we talked about Cinesport tuning. We're doing the Q&A fun stuff. Uh, we did our mailbag. Let's reassemble the Razorback, my friends. And then in about 50 minutes, I think it's going to be Bot Grinder time. Uh, but I, I keep telling you guys to go watch Bot Grinder, and um, there were a couple weeks there where he was not streaming. Let me restart the uh, Logitech software because... Currently, it looks like an absolute potato man. And usually, I think it looks a little bit better than that. I think it just cleared up. Cool. Let's get it going here. Just moving the chat a little bit. Okay, cool. Here we go. Uh, so, all we got to do is swap an antenna and swap a camera, but good lord, is that going to be a pain in the ass? Because all things are a pain in the ass uh, when you have to dig into the Vista and unplug this shit. Um, I also kind of have it buried in the rear of the frame here. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get down in there, so I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to assume that I can't get down in there, so I'm going to pick this Vista up uh, to get at both the UFL and the, uh, and the camera plug. I just lost the nut. Found it. It was in my shoe. Strange place for it. Uh, okay. So get this Vista up and out of here. I wonder where I have this zip tie going for this capacitor. I can almost guarantee you I have it going down through the frame, which means I'll have to cut it. Not the end of the world, but just a little bit annoying. Let's see. Of course it goes down through the frame. Uh, and it looks like it is two zip ties. All right, so we're going to cut it here, and that'll let this Vista pop up out actually because of the because of the way that I doubled the zip tie I have to do what I just did all right cool so now we're good and and it looks like I've also um, I've got this Vista down on uh, the heat transfer tape here so that's gonna make getting it up and off of here Kind of a pain in the ass because last time I tried to pry that shit up, it was really stuck down. But we'll get it. Just get a uh, little flathead screwdriver here. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna try to find a spot to pry that is nice and solid. Yeah, that'll work. Oh boy, yeah, that is stuck down, bro. Holy crap. Okay. This is going to be a fight to the death. Okay. Hopefully not. Hopefully not to the death. I don't want to kill this Vista. Ooh, buddy. It is. It, 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 okay. Uh, I wonder if, like, when this heat transfer tape gets hot, it gets like ultra sticky. Nah, it's starting to come up. It's starting to come up. We're going to be all right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. Just had to be a little patient with it. All right. And I'm going to I'm gonna reuse this heat transfer tape as long as it doesn't look like ass after I pry this up and off of here. Um, let me keep trying to go on opposite side. I really can't get at it up in the front corner. So let's just... Get at it on the back here. And okay. Yeah, it's moving. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. And then I can kind of get to it under the rear a little bit here as well. Oh boy. Yeah, this was uh it was down on there. But looks like we okay. I should have taken these props off. They're so in the way, but I think I almost got it. And 
so much fun. I'm trying to stay under the uh, under the the very corner screw holes. I'm, I'm trying to pry it from those. All right, that might be enough. It might come up and off of there now. I'm not able to pry on the on the front corner, and I can kind of tell that it's hanging on up there. But I'm hoping that there we go. That was it. That was it. Okay, so very gentle with this. I don't really need to take it all the way up and off. Uh, well, you know what? I, 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 I'm, I'm removing this. We got to remove some more stuff. So this antenna is coming off. We're going to replace the antenna. So let's get this. Uh, let's get this out of here. And uh, we can pop this antenna out of the uh, TPU here. I'm going to leave the TPU because it's, it's not really in the way enough. Uh, I need to remove this M2 screw here though because I like to use the little cover that holds the UFLs on. So we'll remove that. And since I removed this screw from the corner, this should now uh, allow that little latchy boy to kind of rotate out of the way. And that'll let me unplug the UFL. So there it is. We got that guy out of there. And so now it's hitting on the uh, the crossfire wire. So let me just try to deal with this. Well, I don't know. Maybe I can just pop this UFL off. Let's see. Come on, little buddy. Come out of there. There we go. UFL just popped off. Let's push it down. I just stabbed myself with the sharp tweezers. And... Looks like it's trying to come off, but it's just kind of fouling on. All right, let's do this. Let me remove these screws, and then I'm going to pull this TPU off of here. That'll give me a bunch more room to work. Uh, okay. All right. Actually, I don't have to take it off. I can just rotate it out of the way. All right, so now we got a bunch of room, and there we go. Uh, True RC antenna is free. Uh, so this is the Axi 2 from Lumineer. It is actually made by TrueRC. So they put their handy dandy little uh, silver lock thing on here. When you use this with a Vista, you really don't want this lock thing. I, I actually take the lock things off across the board. I, I, I just don't like how big they are. And I feel like they can cause problems with um, the, the UFL... Uh, uh, bridging components on the board. So I actually remove them all the time. They're a little difficult to remove, to be honest. Uh, and I'm always looking for a better way to remove them. Um, let me try something here. I'm going to grab the um, UFL like this. Actually, you know, I have a bunch of extra ones. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to ruin this one to remove it. Um, be careful removing them, man. I, I pinch myself a lot when I'm trying to like stab myself with the damn things. The, the way that they lock on, um, yeah, they're not easy to remove. And if you're not careful, you can rip the the copper UFL right off of here. So be really careful when you're removing these. Um, I wish I had a better way of of doing it, but let me actually look at it with a with a five X loop. See if I can figure out why the hell it's so stuck on. Okay, so it's that part. And I, I just, I don't know. Yeah, they're just sort of the way that they are. They don't like coming off. I'm trying to wiggle it back and forth here. Um, oh, I think I see a way to, to remove it. I think if I put a skinny pair of tweezers in there and then open it up, I think that might let it release. So if I go in here, I think maybe I can separate like that. And I think maybe that'll let it slide right off. Not yet. Not yet. Let's get it a little bit more. Yeah. Come 
on, buddy. Come off of there. Eat off of there. This one is now completely destroyed, which, again, like I said, it's fine. I, I, I have a bunch of extras that I've removed cleanly. Um, but yeah, I, I've literally never used these. I, I understand the, the point, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I just don't, I don't love them. All right. So now I managed to break it in half. That's probably going to make it much harder to get off, but let's just maybe actually make it easier. Hold on. Let's see. Hey, there we go. That should come right off. There it is. Okay, cool. So that is off of there now. And now we need to prep this little UFL as we always do. Let's see if I have any scrap shrimp wrap here. It looks like I do. Um, no, that one might be a little bit too big. I have a little piece that's smaller. No. All right, that's fine. Let's get. Danzel the Terrible says, Do you have lots of Vista overheating issues? I do not. That heat transfer tape seems like a pain. Um, I use a zip tie and some dampened Umagrip light, and Vista has never moved slash overheated. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've ever had it overheat, but I know that it gets hot. And I just, you know, I don't, it's, it's preventative maintenance basically. Um, so yeah, I don't ever want to have a problem, which is why I, I spend time thinking about and, and dealing with that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I, I run the vistas with the full, you know, I, I'm like, if I had like a naked vista, I'd be really nervous about it. Um, but I don't, I just, again, it's just a preventative maintenance kind of thing for me. Um, I think that this shrimp wrap will hopefully shrimp up small enough. Let's cut a nice piece here and we'll take a look. So let me get those needle nose pliers right back out. And let's just stretch it out a little bit. Okay. See if that's oh, that's definitely big enough to go over the UFL. All right, question's gonna be: Is it going to shrink small enough? All right, get it right up here by the part of the UFL that connects, and shrimp it down. Nah, not quite. It's not quite small enough. I can pinch it like this. Um, and this is better than nothing. It's it's better than nothing to have shrink wrap on here that's a little bit too big. But um, it's much better if you can have shrink on here that is small enough. Um, what, you, what you want it to do is grab onto the wire. And this, this particular antenna has a very thin, very lightweight wire. Um, so we need a slightly smaller... Uh, shrink wrap this is the annoying part it's really hard to cut shrink wrap off i always feel like i'm going to damage the uh the wire doing this but if you're just super gentle you can get it just kind of nibble at it try not to stab yourself in the finger like i just did and that should be it um and then when you're peeling it off also be really really careful um, again, it's just really easy to rip the cable right off the head of the UFL. But if you're careful, you'll be okay. All right, so let's see if there is a size of shrink wrap that's ever so slightly smaller than the one that I just had. Is that this one maybe? Oh, yeah, that's this one. Okay, this is the right size here. This is the right size for sure. Okay, so let's use this guy this time. And again, we'll cut a nice long piece, not too long, but a good piece here. And then in this case, so th this one 
we absolutely have to stretch uh, to get it to clear the UFL. The, the one a second ago, I think it would have cleared the UFL without even stretching it. But I'm just so used to stretching shrink wrap that I feel like I just do it by default at this point. All right, so there it is. And yeah, just big enough to get over the, the head of the UFL. All right, perfect. That's in just the right spot. And shrimp it down. There we go. So you can really tell. I mean, you can you can kind of like see the see it shrink down to the point where um like you can see the outline of the wire here. You'll you, you probably already know what I'm talking about. Um okay, cool. So on this one though, the other thing that I want to beef up a little bit is this joint here at the head of the antenna. And they give you a little a little lip um, that you can push the the shrink wrap up over. So let's just it, it's probably not going to do a whole hell of a lot, but it's it's worth a shot to see if I can push it up over and get a little bit more strength out of this part here. Um, it's not going to negatively affect anything, so let's just uh, let's just give it a try. Um, You know what? I'm gonna do the full Magilla. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys the full like, um, make this antenna as durable as absolutely humanly possible. Um. So, all right, yeah, we're gonna. Sh um. Well, I want it to to grip down under. The, th this is tough because this is really uh, okay. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to beef, I'm going to beef the thickness of this up a little bit with the skinnier shrink. So let's do that. And that'll add, that'll let this thicker stuff, um, grab onto the wire a little bit better. So I'm going to take the skinny piece that I just used, cut another little piece here, throw it up over. And now this again is only to make this wire a little bit thicker up here towards the head of the uh, of the antenna. So let's just real quick get that on there. All right, cool. So now this is slightly thicker. Um, now I'm gonna take the ever so slightly bigger shrink wrap and I'm gonna cut a piece of this that's a little bit longer. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of welder here. So this is a, we're kind of going all in. What's up, Kevin Sumner? All right, so I need to stretch this out in hopes that I can get it over the little lip on the head of this antenna. So let's just do that a little bit here. I don't need to go crazy with this. And I also don't need to reverse this because I really only want to stretch one side of this. All right. So that should be big enough now, but let's just double check. It is. Okay, cool. So let me give you a little bit of a close up here. What I want to do is I want to make this joint here. I want to make this little meeting point here a little bit beefed up. Fuck you. Stay in focus, you jackass. Um, so I put the tiny little piece of shrink wrap here just to make this thicker. Now I'm going to put this bigger piece of shrink wrap on. And what I want to do is, f is push it up over that little lip. See that? Right? I want to try to push it up like that so that it hopefully grabs onto that lip. But what I want, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bead of welder in here. I'm gonna, so I'm going to put the welder in here and then I'm going to sh uh, push this up over it and then I'm going to shrink it down. Um, I've done this a bunch and it seems to really work well. Uh, you know, maybe it doesn't do anything, but it's certainly not going to make the situation worse other than I guess it adds a little bit of weight to this, but I don't know. I think it's, uh, I think it helps. I hate when the heads of these things, antennas pop off. So, and that's what I'm trying to uh, avoid by doing this. So let me get this camera pointed down a little bit. That should make the focusing issue 
a little bit better. Um, so yeah, this piece is ready to go. And so I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna like pre-twist my hand in the one direction so that once this starts, I can just go in the other direction and I just wanna rotate it around. Just kind of don't add too much welder because you are you do need to get the shrimp up over it. But yeah, that's the philosophy here. Just beef up this joint, give the the wire a little bit more to kind of hold on to, and that should help. All right. So now we got some welder on there. And now we're going to take this guy and I'm actually going to reverse this because I can see that the, the right side of it is bigger than the left. I'm going to reverse this like this. I'm going to have to get that duck in a second here. And then we're just going to push this up over the whole thing. Try not to get the welder all over it. Get it like that. And... Oh, God. Okay. So, yeah. Push it up like that. Push it as hard as you can. And now shrimp it down. I'm going to actually let gravity kind of help out a little bit. And I'm going to use the little, uh, the little torchy boy here. There you go. You see, it's kind of grabbing onto that. So now that welder is going to stick to uh, is going to stick to the um, uh, to the shrink wrap as well. And let me come in here and just give it a little bit more love. You don't want to add too much heat because the the shrink wrap is going to try to come down off the head of the antenna, which is it's kind of doing that already. But luckily, it's going to pinch in onto that welder. And the, the welder is, is like mooshed up in there. So I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to add any more heat because it's going to try to pull down off of it. I, I, I still don't have the perfect way of doing this, but um, this is as, as good as I've been able to figure out. Some of these antennas have a nice lip on the bottom and, and you can really get the, um, like this one. Um, the True RC Singularity antennas have more of a lip here that the shrink wrap will will kind of grab onto. Um, this one just has that, that tiny little, so you see this side, it's trying to come off of there, but this other side, see, it's nice, it's it's up on there, and it's looking kind of nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, I get, you, you could try to put one big ass piece of shrink wrap over the whole head, but then it's not gonna clamp down onto this. That's the problem, right? Is the, the you want the shrink wrap to clamp down on the wire and clamp down on the head, and that that's just kind of difficult. Um, but better than nothing right there, that welder is hopefully gonna uh, do some serious work in um, keeping the head of this antenna connected to the wire. Welder is really strong stuff. It's really, really uh, like sticky when it when it dries. So now we've got this part of the antenna prepped, this part of the antenna prepped, we can plug it on in here. Although, wait, no, first I'm going to put the little latch. I always find it easier to put the latch on um, swung out of the way, and then you put the uh, the antenna on. So let's get that going here. Okay, so latch is going to go. It's not really a latch. I don't know why I keep calling it that. Oh, fuck it. Let's plug the antenna in first. This is, um... Oh! It adhesed itself again. It, it fell down on the, uh... On the tape. I should be... It should be a lot easier to pop it up this time, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much easier. Much cheesier. Okay, there we go back up oh, 
Hockey. And oh wait, no, I want to put this on this side of that crossfire cable. Uh, get on there. Snap, you bastard. Come on. There it is. Okay. UFL's on. Now let's bring this in on the corner here. Actually, I might have to pull this whole thing up and out of here to get at this. Just because I got a lot of wires in the way. Uh, I'm going to have to pop this crossfire up and off. I hate to do it, but there we go. Okay, so this Immortal T cable just needs to get the hell out of the way. Okay, so that's good. Now, get this thing down. Try to catch that little part. And then get it rotated. And this is the most fiddly shit. I, like, I love that there that this little latch exists to, to try to help the UFL stay plugged in. But god damn it, it is just... Like in the worst possible spot all the time. And it's just like such a pain in the ass to get on the little hook and then get into the little mounting point. But I've done it quite a few times. Well, so let's see now. It, it, it might not be on the hook on this other side here. What the hell is that? Uh, I actually think that it's not. I don't think I got it in there properly. Yep, nope, it was not on the hook on the inside. Oh my god! Let's try it again. Here we go. Get on there, you hooker. Get on the little peg. You can kind of see the little peg that you're that you're shooting for. Oh fart. I think I might have had it and now I think it just popped off when the whole stack just Plop down like that. And of course, this crossfire cable is in the way again. Okay. I think it's on. Give it a little tug to confirm. Yep, it's on there. Okay, so now we slot it in. And keep going. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's just check it real quick. Yep, all right, cool. It's on. It's on. Need to push this back in now. Hopefully it didn't just fall off. Okay, cool. All right, so that's in there. Let me get the uh, this screw oops, in just to lock that down. All right, perfect. All right, awesome. And now let me just check it one more time to make sure it's on the little nubbin. Pretty sure it is yeah 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 yeah. i'm putting a bunch of pressure on it it's not popping off all right so that's good to go uh this antenna is home now we just got to deal with the front and the camera wire which might be ten thousand times more difficult hopefully not uh kevin sumner says did you see the surface rc transmitter from radio master with elrs on board k truck uh might need an upgrade i did yeah i um I think CMYK sent that to me. He was like, yo, you're about to go to RC Drift, right? Those guys might be talking about this, but I didn't see it until afterwards. I'll, I'll ask those guys next week. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty gear heavy, those guys. So they might be all over that. Um, gear obsessed is another way that I could describe them, describe them just like us, no different than us. Uh, all right. So Trying to figure out which way to go with this crossfire antenna here. Because um, it looks like I'm going to have to remove. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Let's uh, let me see if I've got a driver that'll get to this. Whew, this is going to be fiddly. I have a feeling I'm going to have to take this Vista all the way out, but I mean, it's, it's worth a shot. So I got the screw out. I, I didn't even think I'd be able to get this screw out. 
Um, so that's kind of nice. And all right, so that's good. Now, let's see if we can get the latch off. The latch has to like really rotate off here. Oh uh, yeah, it ain't gonna happen. Okay, so I need to remove the crossfire antenna. So let's do that by just pulling these rear standoffs off, all the way off. All right, here's one. Here's the other. Fart. Uh, I hate to do it, but it's going to be covered up by the uh, TPU anyway. Okay, I must have loctited the shit out of these bottom screws. And yeah, of course I left a mark in the standoff, but that's okay. All right, here we go. I wonder if there's a, uh, I wonder if whatever system those Surface RC folks are on had latency. I wonder if the, uh, that new setup is going to be lower latency for them. Okay. So let's get this out of here. This is now no longer an issue. Now I think that I should be able to just pick this Vista completely up and out of here because of the way I ran the cables up over the top. I think I should just be able to yeah, yoink it on off. Right now it's hanging up on the, uh, it's hanging up on the screws basically. This is a little tight here. Uh, I mean, I could just back the screws out, but I'm trying to do this with as le the, the least amount of uh, disassembly possible. I think I am going to need to back just this front screw out a little bit here. Because this uh, this little wire bundle here is just a little bit too tight. But hold on, let me actually if I move this out of the way. Here's the the latch that holds the camera plug on. Can I just okay, good to go. And now the camera plug. I hate to just pull on the wires of the plug, but uh, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, let's get a little set of tweezers on here. We'll try to pop this Mippy off. DJI uses the Mippies that are kind of a pain in the ass, but that came right off. Uh, now the difficult part, though. Oh, well, now a couple things are going on. I have to switch this Mippy, so now I have to pull this camera off. Uh, getting this Mippy plugged back in is is, is going to be a nightmare, an absolute nightmare, for the record. But we're in it together, my friends. Oh, that's not the right one. Kevin Summer says, definitely lower latency Surface RC is all Spectrum and Futaba crap. Oh, my God. Yeah, I wonder if they'll. Uh, I wonder if it'll make a significant difference for him. That's pretty cool. All right. They're not like on board though, so I. I don't. I don't know if it'll really make much of a difference line of sight. On one hand, like how could it not make a difference? But on the other hand, I don't know. Drifting is pretty slow and pretty figure skatey it, it really there might be no difference whatsoever <laughs> all right so here we go we need to switch this camera cable over i probably have another one of these camera cables but i mean this one's right here okay White Nebula Pro going on. Going in. Okay. That's that one. This 
feels insane taking these both apart. I should just be taking the one apart, but whatever. It'll be fine. I'll probably never use this black uh, Nebula camera anyway, so. No sweat pulling the, uh, the cable off of it. All right. Put these like this. Snip it off. Snip it off. Might as well swap this over just so that this camera does have some sort of a cable hooked up to it. Ooh, that one actually gave me a, a, a little snap. Thank you for that. It always freaks me out when Mippies just refuse to make the snap noise. Like it looks like they're buried and uh, the, the connected. But I can't tell. All right. And why are you at the bottom of the stairs, dog? Do you have to go pee or something? No answer? All right. What if he did? What if he was like, yes? I would turn this live stream off right now and quit FPV. All right. That's good. Let's get this nippy up on this one. Oh, it gave me another snap. Thank you for that. People need more Teddy. Denzel the Terrible says, Oh, Vax is in the house. Uh, four of those run cam HD analog cameras and boards, and finally they found a way to be able to save them with flashing the firmware on the SD card. That's pretty cool. What, um, what, uh, why do they need saving? Are, are they, do they not work? Was there, did I miss something? Are they like outdated firmware wise or something? I have the uh, the door at the bottom of the stairs closed so Teddy can't get in. If I'm not flying tiny whoops around the house, that's usually what I do to keep the noise down down here. Break a leg FPV says that we need nuclear batteries. We might get sodium batteries and that's something they're working on all kinds of battery tech in the works, yo. All right. Batteries will change the world in, in our lifetime. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure. Okay, now the really, really frustrating part begins because I need to somehow figure out how on earth to get this Mippy plugged in with this thing all, like, jankly jankle-fied. Uh, and like, it's hard to get these Mippies plugged into these Vistas when they're out of the rig, let alone when they're all tied up in the rig like this. So what I think I'm going to do is unscrew this front screw here, because I think that's what the Vista is hanging up on. So let me just unscrew this just to back this screw out, which should maybe allow the Vista to come free possibly come on buddy come on please 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 yes okay amazing so I'm gonna pull the screw all the way out okay Vista is free now should be a little bit easier it's still like all kind of tied up in here, but I, I do have a little bit more room to kind of maneuver here. Uh, there's also like the capacitor that's all fucking connected and shit. Uh, but now I've got a much better, I've got much better access to where the Mippy plugs in. Maybe I can just kind of sneak this on in here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, man. Okay. 
so I need to, I want to rotate this like this. I should have definitely taken these propellers off. <laughs> the props are just super in the way. Um, oh, fart, man. This is, uh, boy. This is tough. Think about removing this standoff here. I think if I remove this standoff, it'll help quite a bit. Hold on. Let me get this standoff here out of the fucking way. And okay. All right. Come on, get out of there. Get out of there. Oh my God, the depths to which we're willing to go. By we, I mean me. It's a color coordinate. What a nightmare. There we go. Okay. That will definitely make it easier. Okay. So now I can just rotate this thing all the way upside down. And now is when I think I'm going to be able to actually get this damn thing plugged in. Although it's still a nightmare because I still have to like hold the frame up with one hand. That That's what's kind of killing me is... I'm having to hold this frame up with one hand. And then I gotta like finagle this little fella with my other hand. Um Oh boy. This is this is stupid. Hold on. Can I do I now have enough room with that standoff removed where I can like maybe put this thing at an angle or something like that. I feel like I have rabies. This is making me feel like I have rabies. No, that ain't gonna work. Ooh, 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 yeah, yeah, over here, over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, all right, I need to figure out wh where, okay, it can go, it goes in there. It goes in the middle of this. Yes, yes. Arrgh. Best FPV commercial ever. Ooh. Yeah, no, this is, uh. Shit, it's on there. It's on there. Nope, it was on there for like a split second. Oh my god. Uh, this sucks. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. All I had to do was... Oh, I should have left the cable hooked up and just popped the camera off. Oh, I could have avoided all of this. I could have left the Vista bolted down oh oh i'm so angry that i didn't realize that oh that is just so dumb of me uh okay i actually think that with that standoff removed, I might have enough room to just do it here. <gasps> it's on there. It's on there. Come on. Come on. Give me that snap, yo. Give me the... Give me the noise. I think it's on. I think it's on. Uh, let me stick something under this so that I can push down a little bit harder on it. I'll do that with the little standoff here. Stick the little standoff under it, and now I can push down harder on the Mippy. 
Yeah, so I got no click this time, but as long as I can get this little latchy door thing on there, then this holds the, the Mippy down plenty. So, fish it under here. Get it on the little hooker. There it is on the hooker. And then, now it's just a game of Sliding it, pushing down, and over. Ugh. Well, let me do this instead. Let me let me flip it back upside down like this, and um, I actually want to get a better idea of oh god if that mippy is uh, actually on there. So let me take the door off. Take the door back off. Not the door, the latch thing. Latch thing doesn't want to come off now, of course. Oh boy, this is the most fiddly shit ever and it makes me want to scream and cry and pee my pants. All right, latchy thing is off. Now, put this guy back upside down. Oh, it doesn't really help if I flip it upside down like that because I, I can't see the top of the damn Mippy plug. But man, I'm I'm pretty sure that that's that's fully seated. I just can't. It's just damn near impossible to see. This is ridiculous. There has to be a better way. Oh, oh fuck! What was that? Certainly looks like it's held down. What was, what just, hit? oh, that was the uh, standoff. It's fine. Um, I swear to God, if I put it all back together and that maybe plug is not sitting down, I'm going to be fucking pissed. And I've had that before. No, it's it's down. It's down. I, I I was pushing down on it good and hard. It's fine. Um hopefully. Man, this is all jangled up, man. This is a jangly jangle pot. Jangly jangle piss pot. In the house. Come on. Get screws get out of here. Alright, good. Uh It would help a ton if I peeled this uh, capacitor off the side of this Vista, but man, it's it's on there like just right. So I'm gonna leave it, and I'm gonna put this latch back on, and I'm gonna assume that the damn thing is plugged in. But it is almost nine o'clock, and I don't think I'm gonna get this done on the live stream. But that's okay. I mean, it's not the most exciting thing in the world. It's just putting a glide back together, which you guys have seen me do countless times at this point. Um, and this will be good because I can take a minute to uh, to just relax because this is really pissing me off. And I just want to smash this with the biggest hammer on earth. Um, so, yeah, let me get this into a spot where none's, nothing's being pulled on. That's there. And, uh, yeah. All I need to do is get that latch on, and we'll be good to go. Um, thanks for hanging, friends. Go get you some bot rider. Oh, sorry if he's streaming tonight. CMYK says he uses dead blow. Uh, uh, Off-axis says they black screen. Their support said by flashing the chip might save them. Wow. That's super annoying. Um, good luck with that. Let us know. Let us know if, if that fixes them. I, I've not heard of that. That's that's super annoying. Um, thanks for hanging, my friend. CiadiaFPV.com has a million ways you can support me. I am completely crowdfunded by you beautiful people. Um, please hook me up with a couple of bucks a month. Uh, join my Patreon. Buy yourself something. Work one-on-one -on -one with me. 
use my affiliate links, lots of good ways that you can keep this show on the road so you can see me struggle more with FPV stuff. Be good, friends. Thanks for hanging. Here comes a little bit more flying from last night. Chasing them little drift cars around. Be good. I'll see you Sunday. I'm not ready. Oh my God. Stop it. Top funnel. Is that good? Nope. Fizz, yo. That is bullshit. Nah, it's no good. It's not good either. This will work. All right, guys. I'll see you Sunday. Thanks for hanging. Later.